I'm Brian and this is George, my son, and we've been working together for the last six years. I'm a sculptor. Um, sometimes I call myself a metal worker because I'm a maker really. A lot of sculptors these days don't actually make anything, but I do. I love Making is very important to me. I worked gym one day a week when I was in my teens and I picked up a few of the technical skills while I was doing that. As I developed, I realised that it was, it was something I was quite passionate about. Lovely time. Great stuff. When I went to art school, art school, I wanted to be a painter, but um, they had a metal work, metal work shop in the, uh, in the art college where they'd they just let you play, play about on, and I just, I was hooked. I just love working with metal. You know, I had a very good tutor in college. He was, became a good friend uh, and introduced me to kind of abstract steel sculpture, which I was passionate, passionate about. I kind of got it. Um, it kind of clicked. I wanted to get away from just using like found objects, girders and plates and stuff, and I wanted to shape them more. Once you've got the uh, got the technique of of hollowing and raising and and you know and dishing, you can make any form you like. As you can see, it's got a nice, a nice. There's curve on it. It's got those cockles in, but they can, they, can, they can hammer out. Well, people think that steel is difficult to manoeuvre. It's, it's not really. People think it's really rigid and inflexible. It's called mild steel for a reason, you know. It's very mild mannered. Even by hand, it, it's quite quick. 50% of my time is spent on doing commissions, I would say. You know, if you're doing commissions for public sculptures, people want things that will last and galvanise steel or last a long time. It's quite a thing to do to stick a, a sculpture in a public place. You're imposing your sculpture on, on the world, really, and I think it's, it should be as good as it, it can be, really. That piece was great because it was, it was an example of how he was dealing with the form and I was dealing with the texture. Um, yeah, and it was perfect timing. I'd finish the f f one fish off, George would be get, putting the texture on it, and I'd be getting yeah. on with the next one, so it was like a production Yeah, it was like it was a great. production line. Yeah. When I'm doing a presentation for a commission, I invariably make a steel scale model. It's far more impressive, I think, to have a model than a, than a drawing. Also, it gives me an insight out of how I'm actually going to make the thing. It's one of the problems with welding sheet metal, is that you can easy, easy burn holes in it, so you've got to be quite... You've got to get the settings right. If I say I'm going to make them an elephant on a boat, I can't change my mind halfway through and start doing a, an abstracty piece or a, a horse on a boat. It's got to be, they want, to, they want something that looks like the model I've presented, basically. So when I'm doing my own stuff, I like to go completely the opposite way. I haven't got a clue what I'm making, I'm just going to make it up as we go along completely. Try to, try to make it unconsciously, really. Set it up and leave it, and it stops automatically when it's done the cut. So you can go up and have a cup of tea, and when you come back, you, the piece yeah. is cut. <laughs> I just love making things. I love making things on a large scale. Uh, I love the physicality of it. And they just get lost in the procedure of making something. It's fantastic. 